Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Christ is in our midst. He is and ever shall be. Well, it's almost the end of this calendar year, and I think we're all very excited to be finished with 2020. The year end has us calculating our bookkeeping to see where we have spent, where we have saved, and how we can prepare financially for next year. And the church, in her wisdom, knows this time of year gets very busy. We focus our attention on so many worldly things instead of remembering and preparing what Advent is truly about, the birth of the Son of God. We're reminded during this fast of this Advent season that although life is crazy around us, although finances may get stretched a bit with end-of-year taxes or school tuitions or Christmas gifts, that we are not to lose sight of the true importance of what we are to celebrate. The Son of God is preparing to be born of the Virgin Mary, becoming a man, to teach us how we are to live, to teach us how we are to become like Christ, and ultimately to die for mankind so we can be freed from the slavery of sin, to be freed from the stomach of death, so we can inherit life eternal. Today we heard in the gospel about the rich young ruler asking Christ, what must he do to have eternal life? And he's thinking, I have obeyed the commandments. I live a good life. I already achieved eternal life. But when Christ tells him to sell all that he has and give to the poor and follow him, he was shocked and he was devastated. And he left very sad. Our journey to eternal life isn't just a list of boxes that we check, but it's constant work, constant sacrifice, constant giving, so we can continue moving towards Christ. We all have so much stuff, especially compared to the majority of the people around the world. We live very comfortable, relaxing lives. And this complacency can be very harmful to our souls. The world we live in preaches the exact opposite of what Christ is asking of us. From a young age, growing up, our parents say, study hard so you can get into a good college, so you can have a good job. Maybe be a doctor, or a lawyer, or an engineer, or a businessman. And thank God, nothing is wrong with that. This is great. But the point is not just to work hard and get a well-paying job so we can live a life of luxury and build up temporary treasures here in this world. Listen to the words of St. Matthew. He says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break in to steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through or steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We all know we live in a consumeristic society. People love to buy things, from clothes, electronics, food, so many things. And now with technology, we don't even have to leave our couch. We can buy anything in the world we want in a few minutes from the comfort of our own home. But sometimes we forget that just like we can buy so easily from our home and from the comfort of our phones, we can also give just as easily. If we are to focus on the kingdom, then we have to stop and remind ourselves that no matter how much money we have, every one of us is like the rich young ruler in today's gospel. We all have so much more than we could ever, ever need. And we still desire more. And this desire and temptation for more blurs our vision of what is important, of what truly matters in this life. And most of all, it's our salvation. It's easy to go from day to day, from month to month, and forget how short our lives are. We pray in the funeral service, our life is but a shadow and a dream. 
it goes by with the snap of a finger. And we forget that everything here is temporary. And if we want to inherit eternal life, then we have to refocus our lives and place our sight always on Christ. Almost directly after the homily, we look upwards to Christ and we pray the cherubic hymn. Listen to the words. We say, let us now lay aside our earthly care, that we may receive the King of glory, who comes invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. You see, we're called to be like the angels, who are immaterial, having no material possessions, so we can put on Christ, so we can free our minds, free ourselves from all these worldly earthly cares that we fill our lives with, free our hearts from clutter, so we can see clearly the will of Christ in our lives and what direction He is pointing us to go. He reminds us today that if we want to inherit eternal life, we have to refocus our life. And remember that all we have is from Him. Nothing we have belongs to us. And we are called to give everything back to Him. Christ doesn't just want something from us. He wants everything from us. He wants us to give back to our church, to give to the poor, to give to those who need, and not with what we have left over, or what after we spent on everything we want, but to give first making it our top priority. If we let the materialistic things of this world cloud our views of other people and make us feel more important than someone else, it gets in the way of our salvation. And then we lose sight of the kingdom of God, holding on to the empty promises of wealth and comfort. You know, Christ might not be calling us all to give everything away and join a monastery, but he's definitely telling us to give selflessly and joyfully and to listen to the words of St. Paul, for God loves a cheerful giver. My brothers and sisters in Christ, let us all remember how blessed we are. And these blessings aren't because of anything we have done, but because our Lord has given us the opportunity and opened the door for all that we have. And we are called and expected to give freely and joyfully, not thinking we can buy our way into the kingdom of God or our salvation can somehow be purchased, but remembering that all we have belongs to the Lord. Let us give so we can make room for Christ to dwell in our lives and in our hearts. We don't have to walk away sad like the rich young ruler, but listen to Christ's call and give joyfully, turning away from the materialistic stuff of this world and refocus our attention, refocus our life on eternal life in our Father's heavenly kingdom. Amen.